is a tiny frog. And these are frog eggs. Over the next 100 days, they're transforming into tadpoles and then into tiny frogs. Oh man, this was a really bad idea. <gasps> and if it works, we're building a real rainforest for them. But how many frogs will survive? It all started on day one with these tiny frog eggs. They look so weird. Ooh. Hey, this is not boba. If we're gonna hatch these eggs, we need to know everything about frogs. So I'm sending Adam to Florida. Frogs love wet, warm climates. And today, we are gonna try and catch one. I got it, I got it. But the Everglades is known for alligators, so we need to be careful. Back at the studio, I'm setting up a real nursery for our frog eggs. I got these eggs on Facebook Marketplace, but I have no idea what kind of frogs they will be. And to keep our tank clean, I'm adding some friends. It's your duty to protect these eggs, guys. Don't eat them. A few days later, the eggs looked completely different. They kind of look like baked beans. And when I tested the water, I found something. This is a water bear. It's so cute. Look at its tiny paws. This is great news. Our eggs are thriving. But after counting them, I noticed that over 20 were missing. Something's really wrong. At first, I thought it was the shrimp, but they were just cleaning them. But then I found the culprit. Gotcha. You're going to fish Jay. We need to be more careful because soon our mystery eggs will hatch and turn into tadpoles. And then, if we're lucky, some will grow up to be real frogs. But it's not going to be easy. And I have a challenge for you. Can you spot these frogs hidden somewhere in this video? On day 12, everything changed. They're alive! We must have a hundred tadpoles in here. And they're so small like way smaller than this nickel. Back in Florida, Adam and his friend were making progress. Guys, there's a pond right here. Come on, Adam. While Jamie's in the studio looking after the tadpoles, we're going to try and catch one in the wild. Oh, oh, be careful. Lord, it's so slippery. <laughs> this pond was full of tadpoles. Oh, oh, we got one. And soon we had hundreds. Wow. This was epic, but we didn't find any frogs. We're gonna have to try at night. We're now in stage two of metamorphosis. But we have a problem. They're not coming to the surface to eat like my fish do. And we don't have any tadpole food in the studio. What the heck? This turtle food must be a hundred years old. Thankfully, I'm a master chef. There, tiny food for a tiny mouth. And a snack for me. Our tadpoles grew and grew. Some grew faster than others. And our tank flourished with strange creatures. They're getting pretty big for this tank. Something really weird happened today. I just got to the studio and that is my crab pickle. But I have no idea what that is. I have to get this out. This could be dangerous to me. Wow. It turns out pickle molted, which only happens every two years. Imagine if humans had to molt, that would be pretty weird. Our tadpoles are growing and they're gonna need a much bigger tank. This way, they have the best chance at turning into real frogs. So I'm recreating a pond ecosystem with heaps of live plants. And I'm using established pond water from Lucy's tank, with her permission, of course. Our wood is floating and it's seriously ruining my vibe. Hopefully this does the trick. Welcome to Tadpole Town. Oh man, I didn't realize how many tadpoles there were. If these all turn into frogs, we're gonna be in trouble. I wonder how Adam's doing. At night, frogs really come alive, so we have a very good chance of finding one out here. Franklin thinks he sees a predator right over there. Behind this, believe it or not, is a giant alligator. Watch this. Oh! Oh! I was terrified, but we still need to find a frog. So we followed the sounds of croaking deeper into the Everglades. And finally, I found this guy. He's huge. 
I can't believe he came from a tiny egg. Over the next few weeks, our tadpoles grew rapidly. They're eating. They honestly look like balloons with little tails. But soon, our luck changed. Some of our tadpoles didn't make it. I tried water changes, medicine, and even meditation music. But slowly, more than half of our tadpoles disappeared. At this point, I almost gave up. But on day 64, something incredible happened. <gasps> oh my gosh, he finally has his legs. He's the strongest tadpole of them all. What do you think we should name him? Comment below. I feel like such a proud mom. But then we had one, two, three tadpoles that sprouted their legs. I grew up with four sisters, so I know just how annoying that is. We're gonna need a much bigger setup for our frogs. So I looked everywhere. None of these have a closed lid. They would jump straight out of here. And frog enclosures are super expensive. There's no way we can spend $1,000 on this. So the next day, I went on a mission to find a cheaper frog enclosure. It's so cold. Hopefully we can find something here for our frog. I spent hours hopping around. And at first, nothing seemed quite right. This closet is huge, but you can't even see through it. And this washing machine is cool, but it would take a lot of modifying. Maybe each frog can have their own terrarium. Uh, I think this is too small. And that's when I saw it. We can pack it with plants and I can actually see inside. But the frogs could fall through these tiny gaps. And it's definitely not waterproof. It's not perfect, but I'm gonna buy it anyway. Hopefully we can make this work. We need to make this frog friendly because this was technically made for books, not frogs. If we had rocks, water, and plants, it could explode. So I'm building a wooden frame to add extra support to the base. This should do the trick. Frogs love rain, so this needs to be waterproof. I'm using silicone to seal any gaps in our cabinet. This way, it's frog friendly. While this dries, I'm giving away this ecosystem kit. It comes with everything you need to have your own pet at home. Last episode, we had eight people win. So comment for your chance to win. The next day, I was heading home when this happened. I see a frog right down at the water's edge. I got it, I got it. This is a tiny green tree frog. He's so cute. If Jamie isn't careful, she's gonna end up with a hundred of these in the studio. Our frog enclosure is dry and waterproof. No leaks. But this looks nothing like a rainforest. So I ordered over $500 of supplies, including this rainforest fogger and this fake sun. For the background, I'm using expanding foam. It looks just like real rocks. Oh, this stinks. And I'm camouflaging it so it looks like a real tree. Do you think it'll trick our frogs? Our largest tadpole grew its arms. We are officially out of time. Which means we need to speed run this ecosystem, starting with heaps of live jungle plants and a jungle floor with multiple layers of dirt and debris. Frogs love these plants because they collect water in their stems. And down below, these bugs will help to keep our terrarium clean. And we can't forget real rain. Oh. I have a surprise to show you. We have frogs. They're jumping everywhere. And look at this one. He is still learning how to use his sticky feet. But they're way smaller than I thought. This is a big problem because they might not be able to find their own food. Our terrarium is the same size as the Eiffel Tower to our frogs. So I'm giving them their first meal in here. These are flightless fruit flies. Oh my gosh, they're eating. This is going great. Until the flies started to escape and the frogs started to chase them. I didn't realize how much they were gonna jump. So instead, I tried crickets. And these worked a lot better. And over the course of a few weeks, they grew. Frogs can jump 20 times their body length. That's like you jumping two huge school buses. Now, my favorite thing to do is play spot the frog from the couch. A hundred days ago, they were just tiny specks in the water. 
We had some losses and faced many challenges, but they love their new rainforest. It was all worth it.